John McEnroe is here, one of the most recognizable athletes in the world. His name is synonymous with the game he has devoted his life to, tennis. His 17 Grand Slam titles on parallel doubles play and devotion to Davis Cup have ensured his mark on the game and his legacy. He has brought his well-known competitive spirit to other endeavors in his life, including a broadcasting career, an interest in art and music, and now a book, You Cannot Be Serious, details much of his life on and off court. I am pleased to have him here for this conversation. Welcome back. Good to see you again, Charlie. <laughs> it's been too long. It certainly has. <laughs> and I don't know whether it's my fault or yours, but I'm glad you're here. This is what Sally Jenkins said. Uh, he has produced an autobiography, and how typical of him that on the eve of the French Open, the most interesting person in tennis turns out not to be a player, but the graying 43-year-old commentator and father I of can't six. I believe she said something nice. <laughs> well, there's more. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Paragraph two. <laughs> Paragraph two. She says he is willing to risk even looking worse in his own autobiography. And so when you look at yourself, have you found the answer to this question that everybody wants to know? Can no, you guess what it is? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? That's exactly right. Why? Uh, no, I don't, I don't have an answer to it, but I'm getting an inching my way closer, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> we want to know. Why is it no. so? No. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, that's the second book. <laughs> Why is it so hard to come to an answer to why? Well, it's, it, uh, it's, it's, it's a great question, but it's, it's not an easy answer to give. I think it's uh, something that's a process, for me at least. I've been trying to figure this out for 25 years. <laughs> I'm this much closer. Um, but I feel like as, as long as I'm improving as a person, and that's the main thing. I mean, I feel like I've sort of learned from my mistakes. I've tried to have a little fun with myself. I think that's what people see when I'm on the air doing the television. I hope that that's what they'll see in the book, that I'm not taking myself too seriously. But the weird thing is that I do want to take myself more seriously, particularly in light of what happened nine months ago, that uh, I want to feel like I'm doing something that uh, I'm giving back for all that I've been given. Okay, let, let me talk about that first. I mean, how do you want to do that? I mean, give me a sense of what comes to you when you think about the consequences of looking at a life and saying, I got a lot I can give. What is it I want to something give? Something as small as uh, being uh, having a John Merrickano Tennis Academy at the Flushing Meadow National Tennis Center, which is underutilized 50 weeks a year, except for the U.S. Open, or something as grandiose as actually doing something uh, politically on some sort of whether it's small or large scale. Not large, being relative. I haven't yeah. done anything, but uh, just the the possibility that I could do something, some type of public service, or if that didn't work out. Uh, something where I would be involved in some something charitable or trying to I guess Bono's my new idol trying to go to Africa with yeah. the Secretary of the Treasury <laughs> something along those lines <laughs> alright let me just go to this this is what's interesting too uh, I'm going to shift around here to talk about a lot of things but it comes within this context of what you said John McEnroe's top 10 recommendation for improving tennis in the 21st century number one tennis should have a commissioner baseball football and basketball all do why not our sport I'm available. I'm ready. No, I think it's... Uh, <laughs> he's, he's slim, please. he's trim, he's yeah. mature, he's ready. I, I think it's a, it's a sport that's crying out for it. I mean, I think you have the U.S. Open and Wimbledon and the, the French to some extent that are getting bigger than ever, but you see more fragmentation. And I think that uh, the players don't have any, I sense, respect for the, uh, the people in charge of the game. And unless they're shaken up, I think the game's slipping away in some of its popularity. We have the Williams sisters to thank for the fact that at least their incredible story has added a big uh, element of interest to our game. And Agassiz's resurgence a couple of years ago certainly helped the men's game. But you're, you're desperate to see personalities in a one-on-one -on -one game. And they need to be made more accessible and more accountable and more available to not only the press but to the fans. And if, if they don't get it, then you need to market them properly. And that comes up to people in charge of the game, whether it's the, the union that takes care of the players that, uh, or, or the... Uh, the bigger federation that supposedly takes care of the sport. I don't get a sense that there's any sort of uh, grand picture that they're looking to do. Davis Cup, it's, it's like an afterthought now. I you, quit you, I quit after one year, just out of frustration being a captain. I just didn't feel like that it was going to do me any good to stay around. It was, life was too short. Conventional wisdom was you quit because the team had done so badly. 
Well, you, we you got had some today. problem with injuries. No, you had some problem with injuries, obviously, and you know. But I mean, we you quit it. because you, you didn't like the way I, the system I, worked, I, not I, because you felt that you weren't doing a good well, job. Well, it was difficult to beg the players. I didn't realize that it would be quite that <laughs> difficult that I'd be down on my knees so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, but but the other so there were things about it you didn't like that had to do with being. Something as basic as that, something as basic, uh, people probably will get a little angry with me for this, but sitting in the middle of the court, I felt like I was getting, doing, I was in a commercial, just the position of where I wasn't captain, and just sort of, I, can, I felt like I was just holding a racket and getting out there myself, and, and I was losing a sense of, I, I, I shouldn't be doing this. It got to the point in our semifinal match two years ago against Spain that I seriously considered actually